good afternoon and welcome to Mid-Monday Ministry Moments with Marie. Again, we're outside. It is such a beautiful day here today. God is so good with this beautiful sunshine and weather. I pray you had a good week. I pray you had a better weekend. And for all the mothers, I pray you enjoyed your day yesterday. You, I hope that you were truly celebrated. Amen. If you like um, this live, if it has been official and help for you, help to you in our studies, um, please like and share. Amen. It is an encouragement to me, and it helps to get the word out. Amen. Because we're all in this together. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for the study. Thank you for what you have given me to give to your people. Thank you for life and health. Thank you for brand new mercy that you gave this morning. Thank you, oh God, for you're so good and you're so kind. We celebrate you each and every day. So let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. You're my strength and you're my redeemer. Amen, amen, amen. Today, um, I have a really good subject. And I have searched my own self in studying this. And, it's, and the title is, What Happened to Your Change? Amen. Sometimes we need to self-reflect to just see exactly where we are. Now, Galatians 3 and 1, it starts out and it says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? So that's where we're going to focus this study on today. And if you'd like to follow along with me, you can get your pencils and jot down scriptures that I have. And you can actually go to um, Galatians and go through it with me. It opens like this. The Apostle Paul opened the third chapter of his epistle with predetermined language distinguishing the congregation as oh foolish Galatians. Paul no doubt felt justified by his remarks and substantiated his claim. In scriptures to follow, Paul presented his accusations with corresponding evidence that would follow in scripture, in rebuke, in self-examination, along with the reiteration of God's promise through his son, Jesus Christ. Now the question that he asked required an answer of clarity from these Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Paul wanted to know who is controlling you, influencing you, attracting you, charming you with seditions, enchanting you with other gospels, and or witchcraft, witchcraft with magical overtones? Who are you following and allowing to separate you from the love of God? Again, he addresses them, old foolish Galatians. Paul further sought clarification on what happened to your conversation about the law and sin that you would be fooled to allow Christ not to be the change that you said that you are. What has happened to your heart? your faith? Are you still singing songs of Zion? Where is your walk in holiness? What has happened to the blood of Jesus Christ that cleansed you whiter than snow? What happened to your belief that Christ was born of a virgin, died on the cross for our sins, and rose the third day? Where is your confession that you said, I was once a sinner. I want to be saved. 
Where is your testimony of deliverance that says, I am saved, I am delivered, I am a new creature, I have joined the body of baptized believers, I am a kingdom citizen, who bewitched you? We're going to find out. Did you know that no one can pluck you out of the hand of God? Christ gives eternal life, John 10 and 28. Do you not know that the Holy Spirit has sealed you until the day of redemption? Ephesians 4 and 30. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit, but rather seek to please him. You belong to God. Do you, did you not realize that your eternal salvation is secure in Christ? You can find that in John 10, 28 and 29. As long as you are operating in his divine will, why would you, why would you, why would you, Paul is asking, foolish Galatians, gamble with your salvation there is only one way to Jesus Christ he's the door of hope John 14 and 6 Jesus declared this I am the way I am the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me Mm -hmm. One more question. So, what what you got? Do you have a better plan? Do you have a better project? Do you have a better procedure, O oh foolish Galatians? Perhaps your plan is still on the horizon. Perhaps your project is still just an idea. And perhaps... Your procedure has been, or not has been, accomplished. So let's look at change. What, why, why did he address this? Why is it so important? Paul's message speaks of his disappointment with those foolish Galatians, that they would be so soon removed from him, Christ, who called you into, who called you into another gospel? It should be Christ and him crucified. How can it be you're so easily deterred? If any other person, he says, or angels from heaven, some people put so much into angels, he said, preach any other gospel unto you than that which was preached, that has been preached. Let him be accursed. Because when everything else is gone, the word of God will stand. Every dot, every tittle. Again, Paul repeated, let none of you be persuaded by any other gospel, for he's already accursed. He says, now, I do not preach to satisfy men. I know your ears sometimes are tickling, but that's not why I preach. Neither do I receive this gospel from a man, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And if you know the history of Paul, he wasn't like the other uh, 12 disciples that, that actually walked with Christ. He was caught up. Amen. Amen. And God revealed his son Jesus to him. We have liberty in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we somebody. He delivered us from the bonds of sin. We are not bound by the law which allows the grace of God to unite both the Jew and the Gentile, the black and the white. 
it allows nations to be united by Christ. Whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, which was a great contention. And most of these epistles that were written in that New Testament, that was something that always came up. They kept saying, well, you're, you're not circumcised, and, 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 and so you, you don't belong. We not only are circumcised, but the law was given to, to Moses, and we're Jews. It doesn't matter. All that was nailed to the cross. So Brother Peter interacted mostly with the circumcised. circumcised. Now, Peter was there. Uh, J James was there. And so was Brother um, Barabbas, Barnabas, I'm sorry, Barnabas. They all spoke at this church in Galatia. So what Paul is saying, now when, when Peter was there, he more interacted with the circumcised because he was a Jew, which were the Jews. So he was going to pretty much stay with his own folks. He was more comfortable there. Whereas Paul, when he came, he leaned more towards the Gentiles, who were the uncircumcised. Now, Brother James and Brother uh, Barnabas, now, they ate with the Gentiles until Paul called all three of them on the carpet. So, in other words, if, if uh, Peter or Paul wasn't there, they interacted, James and uh, Barnabas, with the Gentiles. But when they came, they, they didn't want to too much have anything to do with them. And we said, oh, that is terrible. We are the same way if we don't watch. Sometimes we can go to another um, church or another reformation. And as long as they're baptized believers, they are our brother and sister. But we will segregate ourselves. And that's what, what they were doing. And Paul called them to task on it. He said, we are all Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. So we are all in the image of Christ. Christ made us all. We all have red blood. We all have souls. We all have a mind and a heart. Now, the outward appearance may be different, or some of the um, uh, things that we do may be different. But in God's eyesight, we are all the same. We are not saved, Paul said, by works. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk about the law? Well, let me straighten you out about the law. He said, we're not saved by works, but by faith in Jesus Christ. This makes us one body. Paul goes on to say, I thought we were dead to the law. Why would you want to go back to the old path that Christ released us from? Why do you want to go back to that? You couldn't keep it anyway. I don't know about you, he said, but I am crucified with Christ. This is how I live. How do I live? I live because Christ lives in me. I still live in the flesh by faith. Mm -hmm. Because righteousness came through Jesus Christ and not by the law. The law showed us how much sin we were in. How sinful we were. How deceiving and corrupt our hearts were. That, that, that we would do the things that we would do. It's only because of Christ. So don't get puffed up because you are circumcised. That you come from the church on the hill. Uh huh. Because it's what's in your heart. Amen. Is your heart circumcised? So, oh foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Some of you witness the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And I thought about, you know, when I was younger especially, I witnessed how God delivered people, how people's joints were restored. 
People who were came in crippled were able to walk out. People who were blind got their sight back. One time a woman had a gorder in her throat and it and it was inoperable because it, it, it affected so many other organs and they were trying to shrink it. And it was sitting out like this. And I remember we had a, a traveling evangelist, a national evangelist, and he said to her, tonight, God's going to heal you. And when he touched her, that thing popped up out of her mouth. I, I can so vividly remember. And it was just a big hunk of meat. That's what it looked like. You know, we were young, so they would tell the children, get back and say, plead the blood. But I was peeking. I wanted to see. So how is it that you've tasted the goodness of him? And now you want to go back to be under bondage and the law? Mm. Well, let me talk about change. Because this is what this part of the scripture is talking about. Where is your change? Amen. Change comes to make a difference. To transform. To give you a different direction. To give you a different position. A different course. A different shift. It's a replacement. It's an exchange of something that was old. It's a modification, a fresh covering, a transition, a substitution, a breakthrough, a process of hope with a return of your faithfulness. It'll give you eternal life and all the blessings of Abraham. That's what the change on the cross did for the Christian. Amen. For the Jew and for the Gentile. For the Jew that you don't have to work, get your heart circumcised. For the Gentile, you need to get saved as well. Amen. You can change those old ways. Your inheritance, Paul goes on to say, is not of the law. Nor ritualistic practices. You don't have to go and get a bird or a lamb or anything. You don't have to shake beads and rattle coins. Neither longevity as a pillar of the church or community. It doesn't matter how you're in a church and my great 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 grandfather was the first one to put the stone down to build this church. It doesn't matter. Or I am somebody um, prominent in the community it doesn't matter the change comes to all for the good of Christ amen there's no different change for the Jews than it was for the Gentiles and it is the same way today Galatians 3 and 28 states this Paul said there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male or female. For we are all, capital A-L-L, -L, one O-N-E, in Christ Jesus. Amen. So don't let Satan's rendition of a skewed scripture trip you up. Know your word. Study your word. Live your word. Where you will, if you don't, you will lose out on God's promises. Amen. It's all there in the word. So don't just take for granted everything you hear. Even with my teaching. Go to the word. And the Lord will it's, it's, it's a revelation you get from him like none other. There's no, there's no private interpretations. But he will reveal what you need to know and to work on. Because we all have to work out our own soul salvation. So let's conclude this. Amen. Chapter 5 and 1 of Galatians. He says, stand fast. Don't be moved by any wind of doctrine. There are people who are, who are 
extremely anointed orators. And I'm telling you, I've heard some, they can almost make the hair stand on your head. But you have to listen to what they're saying more than, than the sound. Amen. Sometimes we get caught up in the sound. I love preaching. I love everything. I love the praise, the preaching, the dancing, speaking in tongues, rolling on the floor. What, what, however you express it. Whatever gifts the Lord has given. But sometimes when it, when it gets, when the preacher gets into ecstasy and, uh, and he died. But you got to listen to what they are saying if it lines up with God's word. After all, it's God's word. It's not my word. It's his word. And even if you're in higher education and you copy something and you don't um, give that author due respect, they can kick you out of um, of, of higher education when, when you take somebody else's work and sign your name off on it oh oh yeah they can, that is their discretion to do so how dare we take God's word and sign our name to it amen he said stand fast therefore therefore means on that ground what ground the foundation of the gospel that he came from a virgin, born of a virgin, went to the cross, was nailed to the cross, shed his blood, was resurrected the third day, went down into paradise and preached to those souls, and he went back to his father. Amen? That's the ground we stand on. And our hope is in him. Because just like he was resurrected, if we die in him, so will we. And we will live with him forever. He says, stand fast therefore in the liberty. We're not bound by sin. Sin does not have the rule over us anymore. And then he said, if you sin, which we do, you got to advocate with me. See, it starts with me, I'm in the middle of it, and it's going to end with me. Just stay in me. Amen? In the liberty wherefore Christ has made us free. Amen? So when we go to church, we, we, we can freely worship him. We can freely um, give our testimonies. We can freely sing the songs of Zion. We can freely uh, fellowship together. Amen? We, we don't have to worry about, you know, is, is, is the lamb pure? We don't have to worry about standing in, in line trying to wait to see, see, you know, if it's accepted. And that, I, you know, we can give a prayer or something, whatever they do or did. Amen. We don't have to do that. We can boldly come to the throne or go to the throne of Christ. We have access to him. We have the keys to the kingdom. He said, and be not entangled again. When we are corrected, the Bible says, if he doesn't correct us, then we're bastards. Just because we mess up, he doesn't throw us away, but he will send his word to correct us. So he said, be not entangled again. In the yoke of bondage, pay attention and do what is right. Never let it be said, ye did run well, but who hindered you? That you should not obey the truth. Amen? So, I, Paul, he says, I, Paul, say this. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, what is the lust of the flesh? Well, he gives it to him. Adultery, fornication, lascivious, which is lustful desires, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, which is being disagreeable or varied from the truth that is intended. Um, wrath, strife, seditions. Seditions means 
insurrections against lawful authority. How can you say January 6th was okay? Now, they may not have been saved, but they were having an insurrection. When we go against the plan of God, when we go against um, our, our, our pastors and things that are doing the will of God, that's sedition. Amen? Hearsays. Stop taking stuff and, and taking it. Because anytime it's hearsay or heresies, you take what you hear, you add to it, and send it forth. And that person adds more to it and sends it forth. Don't get caught up in that stuff. Paul said, hear all things. Hold fast to that which is good. So some things the Lord allows us to hear. Why? So because he said, I will not allow your foot to stumble and fall. So hear it, pray about it, and move forward. Don't be a murderer or a drunkard. Amen. And I don't care what state you live in. They got the, you know, um, we just passed it down. Well, I didn't pass it, but it was passed down here in Florida. You can just carry a firearm. Don't even have to have a permit. I don't care. Don't don't commit murders just because you can, because you can fire that weapon. He said, but let the fruit of the spirit be in you. You know, this is what I love about the word. He, the word brings it right where we're at it speaks about the conditions of sin but there is always a but and but means we can put this on the back burner we can push this away from us why because here is the fruit of the spirit which should be in us love that's the first one love for he so loved we have to love. So it's love and joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against these things there is no law. So there's no law to say, well, you can just love a little bit, not a whole lot. There's no law to say that we can't be good or we shouldn't be gentle or long suffering. There's no law that says we can't have joy and peace there's no law against that amen amen so here's our takeaway remember Christ did not modify the law he nailed it to the cross he fulfilled it so you and I could make that change so just continue to ask yourself, is my change still in order? Or what has happened to my change? And I pray that if it is negative in any way, that you will get it right with Christ. I pray that this lesson has blessed you. I thank you for allowing me to come into your homes or wherever you may be and share with you what the Lord has given to me. So until next week, I pray that you are blessed all week, that you're blessed on the weekend, blessed in the fields, blessed when you go and blessed when you come. I love you with the love of Christ. Pray for me and my family. Amen. Amen.